Hello, I'm Donna Friesen. It feels like our future rests on tests right now. Tests to see who is positive for COVID-19, tests to see who has antibodies to COVID-19 and might be immune. No country knows the true picture of the spread of this virus because no country has tested everyone. Here in Canada, almost a million and a half Canadians have been tested for COVID-19 so far. That's less than 4% of the population. The more you test, the easier it becomes to track the spread of the virus and reduce transmission. That's especially important as we start to open up the economy and get people back to work. Tonight, Jeff Semple dissects the intricate anatomy of a COVID-19 test. This has become the new focal point in the fight against COVID-19. These aren't frontline doctors or nurses. Instead, they're laboratory technologists and technicians. And these days, they have their hands full. Everyone is trying to ramp up with the testing abilities. Humber River Hospital is home to one of Ontario's 26 labs tasked with testing, handling potentially hazardous samples to determine whether a patient is infected with COVID-19. We work behind the scenes to provide results that the doctors need. This is a negative one, only one line going up. And those results are now needed badly. As businesses reopen and restrictions are lifted, knowing who is and isn't sick could mean the difference between preventing a second wave of the virus. Testing is key to understanding when new cases arise so that we can descend upon them with overwhelming force and suppress those handful of cases from becoming an outbreak. From the start, the priority has been testing frontline care workers. <laughs> like 35-year-old Lajomi, the mother of four, works in a care home for people with disabilities. And last month, she suddenly lost her sense of smell. My mother-in-law was frying fish one day, and you know how fish smells? I couldn't smell it. Um, and I was like, why can't I smell it? And then when I was trying to eat, I couldn't taste it. And I know I didn't have a cold at that point, um, and it lasted a long time. So that's when I knew that something was clearly wrong. Any symptoms at all? So Lajomi came to this assessment center to be tested for COVID-19. The test itself is pretty simple. A quick, albeit uncomfortable, swab of the throat or the sinuses. You have to open right and say ah. ah. You think ah. ah. The whole process is over in less than 30 seconds. But the sample placed in this test tube still has a long way to go. Only high-risk patients, the very sick requiring surgery, will have their tests processed here. The rest are labeled, placed in a cooler bag, and picked up by a courier then driven to different labs across Toronto, where they join the queue. Not all labs have the capacity to process large volumes of, uh, of samples, so that might influence the delay on results. And capacity remains a concern. When test results arrive at the Humber River Hospital Lab, they're taken to a separate area. Through three sets of protective doors and negative pressure rooms, First, staff put on their protective gear, then carefully move the nasal swab from the test tube into one of these cartridges before placing it into this specialized machine, which analyzes the DNA for two genes connected to COVID-19. It doesn't take long. This is the N2 gene and this is the E gene, so specifically it's detected and it's giving a result of a positive result. It takes less than an hour to reveal the patient is positive. But this is the lab's only machine from an American manufacturer, and it can only process 16 tests at a time. And the tests themselves are in short supply. Prior to this year, there was nobody developing that test. So every company that's now developing that test has had to ramp up production. There are supply chain issues, and there's huge demand for the test. It's as simple as that. The result? This high-tech lab, which conducts more than 10,000 tests for other diseases each week, can only process around 200 weekly tests for COVID-19. I do wish that we had more testing capability uh, so that we could be more informed with our decision making. We're going to ramp up this testing uh, like this province has never seen. 
Ontario and Quebec, the provinces hardest hit by the pandemic, are also having the toughest time with testing. They told me flat out, no, you don't need a test. This Quebec care home worker lied about having symptoms so she could receive a test, and her result came back positive. I couldn't believe the fact that I had to fight and lie to get a test. Her story underscores the importance of testing, because many cases are mild or even symptom-free. We need to do surveillance testing. We need to try and get a measure of that portion of the iceberg that's under the water, those asymptomatic cases. We need to do that before we open. Alberta is now doing just that, testing residents in Calgary and Brooks, regardless of symptoms. Alberta is, has lessened the criteria for testing, which is key. They have uh, allowed a greater number of laboratories to participate in the testing process. For a while in Ontario, for example, only the public health labs were engaged in the testing capacity. But we needed to loosen up those criteria to include commercial labs and university labs. It's an all-hands-on-deck scenario. After three days of waiting, Lajomi's test result came back positive. I was scared, to be honest with you, because I have my mother-in-law, I have my children. That was back on April 14th. After a couple of weeks, her symptoms disappeared and she went back for a second test. But those results came back positive again. All they told me is that now that I already finished my two weeks isolation and I have no symptoms whatsoever, that I can go out in the community, but make sure that we do social distancing. You can't blow this one. She's now been tested five times, all of them positive. Smile, guys. Fortunately, her husband tested negative and her children never developed symptoms. I'm just waiting for that negative so I can really get back to work. Yeah. The molecular test is so sensitive that it can pick up uh, viral genetic material even in the absence of somebody being sick. And the hospital lab director says they're about to add a new test, serologic, a made in Italy blood test just approved by Health Canada that checks a patient for antibodies. That tells you how many people have, have been exposed and have hopefully partial or complete immunity versus people who haven't been exposed and it helps you more with public policy decision making. This lab plans to start conducting serologic antibody tests by the end of the month. The better the testing, the greater our understanding of a virus that in many ways remains a mystery.